Hey biggies, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. Today I've had the honour of touring the amazing Thornbridge Brewery. In my opinion, one of the best breweries in the UK, pretty much since 2004, 2005, when they really started. It's the home of Jaipur, one of the original West Coast IPAs in the UK, but it's also become home to some incredible and experimental beers, whether it's juicy IPAs, whether it's barrel-aged beers uh, from the hall, where this whole place started, um, or whether it's one of the best lagers in the country, Lucas. Uh, I'm settling in with a little session pint after a hard day's filming, but you guys need to settle in with a pint of Jaipur and enjoy this interview uh, with Simon the MD and Rob, the head brewer of Thornton Bridge. I'll see you on the tour. Thornbridge were one of just a handful of UK breweries making American-style beers in the early 2000s, and along with the likes of Brewdog and Colonel, have been the inspiration behind many of the thousands of breweries that sprung up in their wake. So much of their amazing growth is down to one beer, Jaipur, a 5.9% West Coast IPA that was revolutionary at the time, and in the age of haze, seems kind of revolutionary all over again. For such a forward-thinking brewery, it all starts in a very unlikely setting country house in Derbyshire, North England, as Managing Director Simon explains. Back in the day, yeah, uh, Jim Harrison, my, um, my co-founder and uh, business partner, had moved into the hall and we were looking at possible ways of, of creating a, a food and drink brand around it sort of thing. We knew, uh, we knew a brewery in Sheffield called Kellam Island Brewery, headed up by Dave Wickett, uh, who was a friend, uh, and we said to Dave, would, you know, would you be interested in sort of brewing a beer for us and, uh, you know, and having it as a Thornbridge brand? And he said, you know, 2004, 2005 is a good time to be set up a small brewery. We just time. had SBR. Absolutely, and yeah. And the, 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 the yep, the access to, to, to the market had opened up. <clears throat> so um, we created uh, the, the brewery at Thornbridge. We got some second-hand kit, got a couple of young brewers in, and then older chap to uh, to support them, and um, and, and off we went. So uh, first started brewing the Thornbridge beers around about. March 2005. Well, what we did to start with, we did like a lot of breweries do, and we created a, a bitter, Lord Marples, which is still around there. I think it's on. Yeah, some right cats. Yeah, it's absolutely. There, yeah, yeah. Um, and, a, and a pale ale called Blackthorn, which confused a lot of people over the bar at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I immediately was like, well, you would, you would invented Blackthorn. <laughs> so <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord Marples stayed. Blackthorn went, <laughs> um, and then the the third beer was was a beer that we brewed. Yeah, in June 2005. With a lot of, you know, the, the brewers at the time, Martin and Steph, were drinking a lot of American style beers. Mm. You know, we were starting to access those in the UK. You know, it was the time of, of the great tasting goose at 5.9, and, and lo and behold, we created a, a West Coast style IPA at 5.9% on cask, mm. which challenged so many people. Yet, so as I often say, we either started a wave or we caught it at just the right time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it must have been quite a shock to. To locals to oh. go into you know what they were probably expecting three and a half to four and a half yeah, percent yeah. bitter and mm. again as you know as i said before people didn't even consider abv because everything was the same yeah. so we well, didn't we, even yeah. so they were just surprised they'd be drinking again well, well the directors was quite strong wasn't it though? yeah probably directors, yeah because that was used to you go out and watch yeah. football with them dad <laughs> well, and that. if you had that <laughs> we, we, think, we yeah yeah we had cases of people saying just sitting at all of the jaipur and yeah. have four or five pints of jaipur and then fall down as it got up yeah. so you, you'd been yeah. jaipur You've been Jaipur or the day after you were Jaipurly. And it was that sort of thing which, which changed a lot of cask beers. Yeah. Mm. Then, you know, so, so Jaipur really stood out from the crowd on that. Hence, we were also winning lots of awards, um, you know, maybe, maybe a hundred, you know, 50 a year. Every week we simply were winning awards for Jaipur because it was a very standout beer mm. in, in, in which would have been in a strong bitters class. You know, so um, yeah, very exciting times and, and felt very pioneering. So it's also pioneering in a way, so one of your first brewers was Martin Dickey, yep, who, who also went on to found Brewdog, Brew Dog, yeah. so he, he has his fingerprint on, on, yeah, absolutely, on yeah. that beer. What do you think it was about, uh, I mean, was it just entirely new flavours that was just really attracting people? I think it was, I think I, think I always used to sort of <coughs> suggest that, you know, back in the day you'd got traditional brewers with maybe three or four hop varieties, two or three malt varieties, and we were like the... Um, <clears throat> we, were, we were like the, the, the young chefs coming along and saying, well, why would I have three? I could have 50 <laughs> varieties of hops. So why wouldn't we do that? We could have all this sort of thing. So we played. You know, we were, mm. we were small scale, 
but we played, you know, with, with, with all different hot varieties. We were the first people in the UK to, to use Nelson Sovin uh, right. in a beer called Kipling, uh, which we still do now. But thanks to Martin and his success, right on, we can't get Nelson Sovin quite as much oh, as right, we could do. Yeah. It's in punk, it's in it? punk yeah. 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 So, yeah, so we were, we were doing that because, as, 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 well, why wouldn't we? Yeah. You know, because we had ex access to all of this and yeah. we had a phrase of just, just do it, let's, let's try it. And the malt bill is quite complicated on Tripo, is that right? No, not really. No, oh, it's <laughs> no. just... Uh, there used to be a little bit of Vienna in there, right. but it was just kind of like a token amount, really, so... Okay. So is, is it, it's just one malt? Uh, it is 100% Marisotti, yeah. Right, well, yeah. It's such a gorgeous colour, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That, that comes out of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you, if you brewed a beer that was 3% with 100% Marisotti, it would be uh, a lot paler. Yeah, the more more yeah. 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 The stronger it is, the more. Yeah. Yeah. More um, so the one thing that is slightly complicated about Chaipu is then that the, the yeasts are actually slightly different across the, mm. the formats that we've got here. So you've got, uh, well, we'll crack some of this, shall we? Yes. Mm. It's, it's, it's thirsty, right? Today. Yeah. Um, so this is made with like a US 05, is it? Like a classic American yeast? Yeah, US so that's, uh, yeah, they're, so they call it US 05. We get it from White Labs, which is supposed to be the same, yeah. the same yeast. Um, um, so it's very clean and uh, lets the hop shine through, really. But then you've, you've, you've got a slight twist on it. On the original, it's not a twist on it, because it's the original beer, the cask. Yeah. Well, it, is interestingly, when I, when I started at, uh, at Thornbridge, I mean, I was very respectful of, you know, well, not really a tradition, but quite a young yeah. brewery, but, you know, what had gone before and what had been successful. But um, we, when we looked at brewing the, the uh, keg version, we really didn't want to have to brew two di different batches of beer in case sales sort of changed their mind. So <laughs> we, we looked at brewing, brewing the same beer. So we changed the yeast to the, from what it had been yeah. to USO5. And we also, we were looking at malt, we changed maltsters as well at some point. And the Vienna malt we were getting was really quite dark. Yeah, and, and it was remember, inconsistent, wasn't it? it? Yeah, at, at, and if you looked at the specification of the yeah. malt bill, it would be like, well, that's not going to do anything that the animal, you know, how, how could that change the colour? But um, it's coming out. It, amber. It, it, well, not amber, but it was, there was a, a couple few of complaints times, right, yeah. that Jaipur wasn't quite what it used to be in cast. Yeah. Completely. And we went, I went yeah. back to the drawing board and we looked at, we took the bit, you know, we, quite, we, we questioned everything and eventually found out that the animal was out of spec. So that's yeah. how that ended up coming out of the room. And, and the, the animal really is a German pale ale malt. It's, yeah. it's, it's nothing special. So we took, we took that out and then the colour came back. Uh, so it wasn't the Vienna malt, even though they told us. So the malts were messed up there. Uh, and then we went back to a, a Yorkshire strain for the yeast, which is the way I've always said it. I described it as a, a, a Cascale strain turns a two-dimensional beer into a three-dimensional beer. It's like a difference between night and day. It's, so you, you really need, for people making cask beer, what makes Thornbridge a cask beer special and people like Timothy Tales and Floors is they're using a, a traditional cask ale strain, which gives so much more character than, than any other, than a normal strain. Yeah. Uh, so, and then we looked at the attenuation, because it was, with a keg beer, you, we, we always... Yeah, try this one. Yeah, we, we, about three Plato is where you want to be ending up. Um, but if you make a three Plato cask beer, it becomes quite flabby in the mouth. So then we looked at, and all this, we did, you know, we did tastings mm. in the pubs, you know, everyone. Simon and the brewers, and uh, that, that, that's what, that was the um, conclusion that we came to, that we needed to be, make the beer drier, we need to go back to that Yorkshire strain, and um, just sort that Vienna malt out, and then we were back to, but I mean, it was only a blend, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, you know, it was yeah. Like a couple, couple of months. months. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's so interesting. So I can't be accused of ruining John <laughs> like some people always like to say. That's what he was really yeah. to. Yeah. 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 It feels like one of the, the great things of New England IPA is that it has brought yeast to the fore again where people are talking yeah. about these things and understanding it like mm. i don't yeah. think i'd have had a conversation five months ago uh, five years ago and been able to understand you saying well this yeast actually takes up the bitterness mm. more yeah so mm. actually having an incredibly popular yeast forward style beer yeah is a bit of a step change even if it's obviously had its negatives as well in the, in I mean, the yeast forward people just it is quite interesting because we've always been such a phrase exists, yeast sort of forward, haven't yeah, we? Because yeah. of the number of different styles of beer, whether it be vice mm. beers, sort of culture, sort of whatever, we've always carried it and, and having cask as well as sort of mm. a wide range of yeasts, haven't we? Yeah, as well. Yeah, so yeah. yeast has always been very 
much at the forefront and now with, with other ones as well it's yeah and then we're experimenting with experimenting with a couple of other ones at the minute aren't yeah. we? So we've talked exclusively about Jaipur, mm. which you said is about 40% yeah, of about your 40%, yeah. volume, but that yeah. still leaves 60% yeah. of a wide variety yeah. of uh, beers that yeah. you know, vary from Lord Marple's, your, yeah. one of your first beers still going, to yeah. you know, I've seen devices yeah, yeah, absolutely. Out, um, and obviously your, your barrel aged range of yep. like Flemish Reds yep. and stuff mm. like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, behind, behind Jaipur, um, Lucas comes in very, very heavily, Green Mountain, Jamestown now as well. Yeah. Um, is that a hazy pale? Yeah. Uh, it's, the, it's the big brother of Green Mountain, really, isn't it? Yeah, sort of and, there's more, and there's more sort of, uh, I think there's lactose in it. Yeah. Uh, oh, right. It's more... Uh, so much more body and... Yeah, you softer. know, like New England style. Yeah. Well. yeah. yeah. I, think, I think Green Mountain is what you would call mountain IPA, is it? Which is no, similar. no, the, that's the, what, what do you call it then? The North Bridge one. Isn't it? The North Bridge, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was great. But, so but ma mountain IPA, this is a new term that I only <laughs> learned about when we did a video saying what is New yeah, England yeah. IPA. Mountain is supposed to be in between, less sweet, fresher, a bit more bitter, yeah. but still hazy. Yeah, 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 correct. Yeah, I have to ask the younger brewers about these specifications. So. <laughs> a West Coast haze and an East yeah, Coast. I know beer. a West Coast, but, yeah. <laughs> but the mountains are between the coasts. Yeah. I just love that. <laughs> We're just sort of inventing new styles and just calling yeah. them IPA because you exactly. don't go out south. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 You well, know that, Paul. Yeah. 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 It's a number of beer styles we have, which mm. is, which is uh, our strength and our weakness as in the challenge for the brew team because what we tend to do is everything we sort of do seems to sell well. So there's always people mm. wanting... Whatever beer we had, there was a couple of earlier sort of things, I was just sort of saying, when is Bliss Point back? And I'm like, I just don't know, actually, because Bliss Point's coming now, everybody's liking Bliss Point. And yeah. But it's fitting everything into the, into the plan, I guess you don't it? kind of know where the ceiling is for any of your brands. If you can't brew no. enough for demand, you'll no. never know no. how well, far you need yeah, to take it. Yeah, I mean, it. again, last year at this time, we'd only just released uh, Jamestown, I think, as, as a draft beer. And now it's in package and probably the second, third best-selling beer we do in yeah. package. So yeah, we don't know where it is, and then because it's it's a it's a ever moving feast within sort of craft beer anyway. That suddenly that takes off, that takes off. The thing that you'd left behind, everybody forgets about until somebody mentions it, and then that comes back again. So it's it really is constantly mm. moving. So do, do you? I don't know whether worry is the right word, but do you, do you worry that you're because you, how big are you guys now? Like. 60,000? No, not that big. About 45,000 45. will do this year, yeah. So, that, I mean, you're a big brewery to be doing so many different styles. Yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of brewers oh. of that size that are continuously spread. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to be able to continue doing that, or do you think habits might? We will, but it, it'll be a, it continues to be a challenge. But, but, but ultimately, we're a, we're, we're a creative business that manufactures. We're not a factory that, you know, I could argue we could, we turn down orders on Jaipur, we could have a Jaipur factory. It would make everybody's life easier, wouldn't mm. it? But we're far less exciting place to work. Uh, that sounds and, quite Willy Wonka. Yeah, no, Jaipur yeah. factory. Jaipur Jaipur land, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, no, I think it's. I think what happens is because of because the brewers are the creative types and the, and the, and the market, as Rob alluded to before, we we I think we we, we shaped the market in the early days, <clears throat> and we challenged the the drinker. But now the drinkers are even challenging us, mm. you know, because it's that quick, and that. So you know, we 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 want to. You know, we're, we're 15 years old, <clears throat> which is nothing. In, in, but brewers' lives are like dog lives. So effectively, we're about 110 years old <laughs> now. So we have to stay relevant. We have to stay interesting. Uh, and that's the thing with, with having the smaller sort of scale stuff we can do, some of the barrel stuff, some of the keeping up with sort of the modern trends, that's what we do. So I think we'll always do a little bit of that, much so, to his annoyance. <laughs> oh, you say that though, but it's just it's like, it's like you know, stress in life. Yeah, if, yeah. if you didn't have any stress, it'd be boring, but yeah. too much, you know. Yeah. yeah. You've yeah. got to find the balance. Find yeah. the balance so, and, we, yeah. and we only make beer. Yeah. That's all we do. Yeah. We don't save lives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll give you shorter than that. <laughs> <laughs> so.